Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you one of Hollywood's most vivacious and glamorous screen stars and one of our fellow travelers on the victory train, Miss Claudette Colbert. Well, Claudette, how do you like it here at the Great Lakes Naval Training Station with all these handsome sailors? Oh, it's wonderful, Bob. By the way, how do you get acquainted with a sailor? Well, in your case, just... <laughs> in your case, just walk by the barracks without a bodyguard, that's all. <laughs> I knew I'd never get to that line. <laughs> what do you mean, Bob? Don't they even wait for an introduction? What? Don't they even wait for an introduction? Listen, Claudette, once the sailor was cast away in a desert island in the middle of the ocean with a beautiful blonde... He was just about to say, pardon me, if we've been introduced, and before he could say pardon, the Marines had landed. <laughs> Thank you, fellas. I'll do the same for you sometime. Thank you. <laughs> but you know, Claudette... <laughs> throw, I hope my agent has 10% of this throat. But you know, Claudette, this is one of the best places in the world to train to be sailors. These boys have got a wonderful lake, haven't they? Well, don't be jealous, Bob. You've got quite a bay there yourself. <laughs> Just compare your physique with those fellows out there, hmm? Just look how hardy they are. So what? Look at me. I'm hardy. Bob, there's quite a difference between hardy and lardy. Ah, <laughs> uh, but then perhaps you're not as young as you used to be. Well, I don't know why you say I'm not young. I bet I'm as young as any of these sailors. You are not. I've seen these sailors, and they have American flags tattooed on their arms. Well, I've got an American flag tattooed on my arm. I know, but theirs have more than 13 stars. <laughs> so have I, if you want to count the dimples. You know, Claudette... <laughs> you know... Claudette, I'm glad to be here, and I'm, I'm really thrilled about it. I understand, but that's no reason to make a show of yourself dancing the sailor's hornpipe on Michigan Boulevard. Oh, that wasn't the sailor's hornpipe. I was running after a bus when my suspenders broke. <laughs> hey, just look at all those fellas out there training to be sailors. Gee, how often they must hear those words, those wonderful, impressive words. You mean all hands on deck? No, I mean those words so dear to the heart of any naval man. Roll them, brother, you're fated. <laughs> That reminds me, I heard a peculiar rumor. Of course, I don't believe it, but I heard that soldiers and sailors like to shoot crabs. No. What a vicious rumor. Of course, it isn't true. Of course, I have heard of one regiment that shot crabs so often they had the only sailors in the Navy who'd stand at attention in a kneeling position. <laughs> Applaud that. I want to welcome you to the Peps on the Show, and I think you really deserve a lot of thanks for taking time out from your work on the Hollywood Victory Tour for Army and Navy Relief to come over here. You know, I wanted to meet you the minute I saw you on the train. Uh, I thought you did, Bob. Really? How could you tell? Oh, I don't know. It was just something about the way you kept walking by and dropping your handkerchief. <laughs> I'm positive you were flirting with me, Bob. Well, maybe I did have a slight gleam in my eye. Slight gleam? That's the first time the super chief ever came into Chicago with two headlights. <laughs> uh, Bob, you actually embarrassed me. Uh, I don't mind having an admirer, but, you know, you followed me all over the train wherever I went. Was I that bad? You certainly were. The only way I could get rid of you was to go in the dining car. <laughs> And when we finally did go in the dining car, you were so noisy. I was noisy in the dining car? <laughs> well, perhaps you didn't mean to be, but, gosh, the way you crinkled that wax paper unwrapping your sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, those waiters were so snooty, they wouldn't unwrap them for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you know, it was picturesque. The way dinner was served as the train was going along the edge of Lake Michigan... And you know, Bob, I thought a dollar for a fish dinner was very reasonable. Well, I didn't say it wasn't. No, but you were the only one that put a fishing line out the window and tried to catch your own. Well, anyway, I'm enjoying the victory train very much. 
Well, it must be fun for you, Bob, making the trip with all those beautiful girls. Joan Bennett, Merle Oberon, Olivia de Havilland, Joan Blondell. Oh, were they on the train? I hardly noticed. You hardly noticed. For 3,000 miles, you fizzed like a bottle of 7-Up. <laughs> yes. Yes, I percolated all the way from Pomona to Cicero. You know, the whole trip, the whole trip, I sat between Merle Oberon and Olivia de Havilland. Uh-huh, I saw you, but... I noticed you didn't do any talking. I couldn't. Why not? Every time I opened my mouth, smoke would come out. <laughs> They're hep, those guys. There. They're yeah. very hep. And when we went through that tunnel, I saw you lean over to kiss Joan Bennett. Yeah, but there was a sharp curve in the tunnel, and the train gave a sudden lurch. But what happened? I don't see why all the girls rave about Charles Boyer. Oh. The train did lurch and rock quite a bit, didn't it? Boy, I'll say that train rocked. In the morning, I went in to get washed and dressed, and I splashed cold water in James Cagney's face, dried off Charles Boyer, and walked back to my berth in Cary Grant's pants. Well, that's as close as you'll ever get to any of those three. Well, why, I think I stack up pretty well with them as far as looks go. Well, I think you have ears just like Cary Grant, and your eyes are like Boyer's, and you have a chin like Cagney's. Do you really think my features are the same as those fellas? Yeah, but brother, what mistakes were made on the assembly line. <laughs> well, one thing you've got to admit, Claudette, I was really a big shot on that train when we got to Washington. My brother's a big politician. He gave me a letter of introduction to the president. Boy, I certainly made an impressive sight as I walked in the front door of the White House and handed the letter to the doorman. Well, you made an even more impressive sight when you came flying out on your ear. Well, how did my brother know Wilkie didn't get in? <clears throat> oh, Bob, isn't Charles Boyer wonderful on that trip? And Cary Grant. I can't figure you out, Claudette. Cary Grant, Charles Boyer, just a couple of ham actors. What tell me about them? Well, did you see him taking bows in front of the crowd at the railroad station this morning? Yes, you almost fell off their shoulders. <laughs> well, the cups of the sun got a little heavy. <laughs> <laughs> it's no use, Bob. <laughs> Somehow you just don't appeal to me like Charles Boyer does. Oh, you just like him because of his accent. Well, I guess you're right. I, I do like his accent. Well, I can have an accent like that. Listen. Ah, oh, Claudette, ma chérie, you are très charmant. Come, kiss me. Kiss me. Well, it must be something more than his accent. <laughs> Mary, I'm crazy about Mary, for Mary is plainly lovely. When she's with me, I'm a happy guy. Gee, Mary, without her, I'm lonely. And if she will say I do, then I will too, and may Mary my. Mary, I'm crazy about Mary, for oh, Mary is plainly and lovely, when she's with me, I'm a happy guy, gee, Mary, without her I'm lonely, and if she will say I do, then I will too and make Mary Check and double check. That's what Pepsodent did. They checked and double checked the fact that Pepsodent tooth powder makes teeth twice as bright. 
Independent laboratory tests had proved that Pepsodent tooth powder can produce a luster on teeth twice as bright as the average of all other leading brands. Say, that's mighty important evidence. It sure is. And then Pepsodent double-checked this discovery in practical tests. Yeah, you know, I've seen pictures in the current magazines of the many sets of identical twins who joined in the tests to prove that Pepsodent tooth powder actually gets teeth brighter. Yes, and here's how the test was made. One twin used Pepsodent tooth powder. The other chose another leading brand. They brushed their teeth the same number of times in the same way. Everything was just alike, except the kind of tooth powder they used. And in the case of each set of twins, after just a few weeks, anyone, and I mean anyone, could pick the twin who used Pepsodent. Just by her smile, the Pepsodent twin had teeth twice as bright. Man, you mean you could tell the twins apart just by their teeth? Well, that's real proof. You bet it is. Pepsodent gives a twice as bright smile. And what Pepsodent can do for the twins, let it do for you. Just go down to the corner drugstore tonight and say, Pepsodent tooth powder, please. Remember, you don't need an empty...